Welcome to Danny and Mimi Around Columbus. I am Danny Aaron Sebia, and this is Mimi Woodson. And we are here and starting our new show. Thank you so much for joining us. And you know what? We're going to get right into it. And right now, Mimi, you first. I want you to tell the audience as to why are we doing this show and specifically, why do you feel like Columbus needs a show like this? Well, that's funny. I thought you were going to start off, but I'll start off. I'll be the good co-host on here. All right, the reason we decided to do um, Around the City is because there are a lot of secrets, a lot, lot of nice places, a lot of information that everyone don't get every day. So the best way to do it is do a show that would uh, make you laugh, make you cry, and be hungry, or whatever else that we would think of to bring to the show. Just don't want, we want to get away from all the negativity and all the same businesses and the same information. We want this to be our home place where people feel comfortable and show off what they can do in our city. Why are you here, Danny? I'm here for exactly the same reason you just said. That's mm. pretty good. Um, thank you for that, Mimi. And now what we're going to go into. <laughs> no <laughs> to way. The, I believe Columbus needs um, an avenue, a channel where we can get information and um, not just to the Latino community, to every community. There's so, much, there's so much talent in this town that Columbus doesn't ever hear about. There's so many wonderful places to visit, so many wonderful places to eat at. And um, you know what? We're just trying to bring some light to that. That's all we're trying to do, right? Right. And you could have did right. this all by yourself. No. You did a great job. No, And no. why we're doing this. Next, let's go all on. All right, all right. We're going to go right into the ARP uh, funds that are out there. And for those of you that don't know what ARP stands for, Mimi? Danny, ARP is American Rescue Plan. It is a funding due to COVID-19 that a lot of cities received. Columbus, Georgia was very blessed to receive $78 million. We didn't receive it all at one time, but a small portion. And out of that ARP funding, we established um, an ARP reimbursement for small businesses, which is, uh, we put aside $3 million as reimbursement to citizens. So if you want to Google the, if you want to Google it, mm -hmm. the easiest thing to do is Columbus, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, ARP. What's going to come up is ColumbusGA.gov, and it's going to be um, the ARP site, and it's going to show you a little graph, little charts, and I'm sure, uh, Mike, you're going to be able to put that site up right now. That's it. And when you're going to do that, it's going to say Small Business Grant Program, and there are um, three categories, small business grants, the first one, hospitality, and also the nonprofit, right? And right under, this is the trickiest part of the website. If you're a small business you have, that you have not gone there yet, the trickiest part is when you go into that website under small business grant program, let's just say there's an overview. There is a little word there called details with some arrows. If you click that, that is where you're going to be taken to the actual media kit for the Columbus ARP money. Keep in mind this money, uh, you, do not re you don't have to pay it back. It is free money for small businesses to help them get reestablished after such a pandemic of COVID-19. Next, Danny. Excellent, excellent. So we're gonna go right into crime prevention and um, the crime prevention grants that um, have been awarded um, actually over the past several years, there have been many wonderful programs, and, and um, they're outreach programs, they're programs designed to um, help kids stay off the street. Um, they're um, definitely programs that are, a, a lot of them are focused on inner city and um, um, a lot of, you know, development of our, of our youth. And so, to speak specifically to the crime prevention, that first batch of applications, those are already in now. And um, in case you didn't know, did you know I was the chair of that board? Yes, I did, very much. And it's going to be an interesting board with you being the chair. I, I will take that as a compliment, I think. It is. And, okay, good, thank you. <laughs> and um, on that, sitting on that board, I'm able to see all these wonderful programs and applications come in. And let me tell you, um, Columbus, there are a lot, a lot of wonderful programs that no one's ever heard about, and it is our job 
um, to spotlight those programs and we're excited to be doing that here in the future. Um, but as far as the applications are concerned, you know, that, uh, that window has closed. Uh, that closed March 31st. Um, there was almost 50 applicants. Um, there was 49 uh, that applied. And out of those 49, the first batch um, is, is in their review process right now. And so what's going to happen is they're going to get scored based on, on the program, the scope, and we have to make sure that, you know, it lines up with uh, the parameters of the crime prevention, um, you know, grant money. And so uh, that is where that is. We're looking to hopefully have uh, money in, in hands for these, um, for these people who run these programs uh, by uh, June, July at the latest, uh, simply because there is so much to score, so much to go through. And we just want to make sure that we um, get the money in the right hands uh, for the perfect, perfect, perfect avenues of programs that we have here in Columbus, Georgia. So, and as the chair of the Crime Prevention Board, um, I just want you to know how important it is uh, for folks like, for example, Seth Brown, who is the Crime Prevention Director. I work very closely with, with, with Seth and, um, you know, he has brought to our attention all these wonderful number of, of organizations. and. Um, we're just excited to be a part of it. I want to thank the council. All you're right. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, okay. You're thanking I'll, the council. So I'll, you're I you're want welcome. to officially thank the council for um, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of funds that we have. Um, and, and you know what? You know, a lot of people don't know e exactly about the crime prevention um, funds, and let. I'll just say this, folks, if, if you have a, a dream, a vision of a program that you may want to start that you feel will um, in the future prevent crime, especially when it comes to our youth and keeping them out of trouble where, you know, um, I have a heart for, for youth. And if you, don't, if you don't give the youth something to do, the chances of crime in the future does increase, period. And so... Specifically, when it comes to a lot of these organizations, I just want you, you to understand that if you do have a vision, if you have a dream, if you have a project that you're considering, you know, get your 501c3, file for the 501c3. Yes, there is a backlog. Yes, it may take up to a year to get it. But let's say, for example, you wanted to, um, you know, go into, um, you know, the inner city and, and start a, a, a chess club to keep kids off the street, or you want to, you know, have, you know, uh, a, a gaming uh, a building where you can at least have the kids there come and play, um, you know, video games and or chess, uh, you know, at the same place, whatever it is, and say you need $10,000, $5,000 of seed money um, to get you started. That is the wonderful thing about the Crime Prevention Board. Those funds are specific to be used, specifically to be used as seed money to get a program started. And no other organization that I know of will give you money up front to start something like that. And that is the wonderful thing about the Crime Prevention Board. But you must have, correct, Danny, you must have a 503C in order to apply, correct? Yes. A 501C in order to you to apply yes. for the funding. Is that a repeated funding or is there a time limit for that funding? Is it one year, two years, three years? How many years can you get the funding? So every, so every year you have to apply for, for a new amount. Now you set, you ask for a certain amount um, and then the board goes through and recommends how much should be funded. That goes to council and then of course that's where the funds you know, get, um, get uh, you know, approved and dispersed. But the idea um, and, you know, you don't hear this a lot, but the idea about the crime prevention grant money is that as a business begin or an as, as a business slash organization begins to flourish on its own, you're supposed to start to wean off of that so that another organization has an opportunity to get to get kick started. And um, so that that's what that's really designed to do. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's important for you to say it because we don't want to give the impression that you can get this funding and it's a continuous funding because it's not you get that's just seed money for you to start the program right 
Um, and that doesn't mean because you qualify this year, you can qualify the next year either. Like how many years can they, how many years can they apply before they're not qualified anymore for the program? Do y'all have a designated time like that? For instance, let's say I have, I've had it, right? For a program of mine. <laughs> and I'm on my fourth year. Can I come back and still get money or no? Because I already gotten money three years in a row. Well, everything's gonna be looked at as far as your program overview. So if, okay. you're, if you're already making what, you're, what, you're, what you wanted to make four years ago, then we're gonna look at that and we're gonna say, hey, why are you asking for, for money again when you're obviously able to operate on what you're doing now? And I mean, those questions get asked and those questions get answered. And um, you know, the disbursement of funds is gonna be in direct correlation to how the board feels and then of course, ultimately how council feels um, about, those, about those funds and where you're at, so. And Seth Brown does an awesome job in reporting to council when it's time for approval for it. Um, does Seth Brown and yourself as the chair look at anything in the future coming before council and introducing these different programs so our citizens, you know, our taxpayer that fund this through the sales tax can see where this money is going to and so that they know about the program because you might have an exciting program and I don't know about it and I can benefit. But if it's brought before council and we know about the program, then the citizens see it and then they have an opportunity to allow their children to participate. Is there any vision in doing something like that in the future? Sure, there's, there's absolutely been lots of talk. And matter of fact, uh, Seth and I were talking about it just the other day. Um, you know, people forget that you know, if, if a picture is worth a, a thousand words, just imagine what seeing somebody there in front of you, you know, um, sharing their vision for this program in front of, say, for example, council, right? And so I, we have been saying, hey, we're going to start, you know, bringing some of these organizations after, after funding um, some of these subrecipients, we're going to start bringing them into council meetings you know, we're, we're gonna request some, some time, and not, not a whole lot of time, but just enough so that the organization can um, um, express what their, what their mission statements are, you know, how they, how they got started, where the, the, the beginning point was, where ultimately they see themselves in three years, five years, and I feel that, um, you know, if, if that were to happen, and some of these service humans come to council and, and, and you know, introduce themselves, I feel that people forget that council members are people too. And if you see these people, you're able to you know, put a face um, to an organization and then you're able to see what they're doing. You know, um, hopefully uh, we're looking at, at possible video uh, programming for each of those organizations so that um, you know, when you can pull up a video and see, check out the organization, yeah, you know, maybe your, your kids, maybe kids in your community are wanting to become involved. But the idea is that we want to spotlight that talent. We want to spotlight those organizations. We want to spotlight those, those groups that just are doing wonderful, wonderful things in our town. And so, yeah, there is definitely vision for that in the future. And so you'll start seeing more and more on that after funding. Uh, that's one we, we didn't want to obviously spotlight anybody while we're in the application and the review process. But after funding's over, we're going to start doing that so you guys can have a uh, you know, better, uh, better eyes on, on that. You, well, since it's already closed for this year, when's the time frame that people can apply for this program so that people can start getting ready for next year if they'd like to apply for the crime prevention program grant? Well, um, uh, I said earlier that the window just closed March 31st for this year, obviously, but um, it's usually opened anywhere, uh, I believe, right after the beginning of the year. Um, and so we want to make sure that everybody um, has that on their, on their, you know, radar, on their radar. But really, when we get to the application opening date, we want to do a much, much better job. And this is, you know, you know, directly from Seth as well. We want to make sure that we let um, the word out early so that if there are organizations that are wanting um, some, some financial uh, help and, and, and grant um, aid, for their, um, for their organizations that they know way ahead of time to make sure that everybody has enough time to apply. Okay, well right. Danny, it seems like um, today we hit two big topics. 
that are very important to our community, to the citizens. The ARP um, funding reimbursement program, which right. is very important, and that program will keep running until the money runs out. So people need to go online, look at it, see if their business qualifies, and apply for those fundings. And crime prevention is another good program where, again, we're helping the community. Taxpayers are paying for different things in our community, and this is their taxpayers at work. ARP reimbursement for small businesses and crime prevention to help us control this crime that we have in our community. Right. Thank you for bringing us up to date, sure. telling um, us all about the crime prevention program. I think it's important for people to know, and yeah. I think that's what's going to make this show very special, is that we as government and city council, we put these programs out, but if you're not watching council at that time, or you're not reading the, the newspaper or listening to the radio, you miss out on these programs and you miss out on these opportunities. And Danny, I think what we're going to be doing now is very well because what we're doing is bringing it back to the people, reminding them that these programs are available for them. Not to be afraid, go after the money. The money's there. The money's there. Um, excellent point, which brings me to another excellent point. It is time to go to a quick break, but I want you guys to know that as soon as we get back, we're going to be going into our Sabor de Columbus. Mimi, what does Sabor mean? Flavor of Columbus. All right. When we come back, we have a very special guest, and I am personally super excited about it because I'm hungry. All right. Hello, I'm Rob Landers, and I'm the director of the Columbus Civic Center. I'm standing in the parking lot of the Columbus Civic Center, and it may be empty right now, but come this Juneteenth, this location will be filled with food, fun, and festivities. We will host the first citywide Juneteenth celebration on June 14th through June 20th. If you're interested in being a vendor or volunteer, please visit us at columbusga.gov forward slash Juneteenth for more information. Oh, mira, no te estoy diciendo patellitos son mejor. No, los tostones, porque hey, tostones hey, 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 guys, we are back. Oh. Sorry about that. All right, we're back here, folks. We have a very, very special guest here today. That, that was so corny. But anyway, we're, we have a very special guest here today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Cesar Bautista. Cesar, tell us about yourself and what you're doing here today. So, thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm Cesar Bautista, I'm the owner of Bodega 1205, and I'm uh, bringing a little bit of our culture to Columbus. Cesar, let me ask you a question before we go into this delicious plate you brought us at. What is the difference between um, your food and other Latino foods? For example, let's say uh, a Mexican plate. What's the difference between your plate and a Mexican plate? So. Uh, at Bodega, we're a Latin American fusion, which means we have dishes from all over. We have Puerto Rican dishes. We have dishes from Colombia, um, like our arepas are Colombian. We have uh, dishes from Panama. We're not a specific uh, type of food from a specific country, if you know what I mean. If I could cook better Mexican food, I will do it, but I don't want to offend people by doing so. Gotcha. Well, can you tell us what you, what did you bring here? And, and I'm sorry, the reason I ask you that is because a lot of times um, when people look at Latin food, they think of, you know, it's always tacos, enchiladas, and nachos. And so we want to make sure that we understand that in the Latin culture, there are 21 different cultures within the Latin culture. And within that, everyone has their own special little flavor um, when they're cooking. Everybody doesn't cook the same. Everybody does not eat um, guineitos like Danny likes, or tostones like me, or um, enchiladas. You know, every, every Latin culture has a specialty in their plate. And this is the reason why we wanted you to bring your plate, which is exciting, because people get to learn about something different, and tell us what you had cooked here. So here we have a, an interesting dish, actually, it was built for Columbus, for Bodega. It was uh, made by one of our uh, chefs, Dialine. She's sadly not with us, her husband, PCS. And, but I want to mention that this is a combination of a vegan rice with a salmon, um, fresh salmon. It, is, uh, it has a little bit of Asian culture or 
an Asian taste on it, push into the Caribbean side of the house, and then the fresh salmon and the salad to complement. We have this in one of the healthy options that we have at Bodega. You can either have the salmon by itself or the rice by itself. Um, it is built with uh, asparagus, a little bit of uh, carrots, lettuce, and we add obviously the platanitos, as you said, or, or the mm -hmm. sweet plantains, as you were discussing before, yes. to uh, create a little bit of more flavor to it. Hey, before you know what, before I forget, thank you for your service. I oh, appreciate that. That's right. It was an honor to serve. Yes. So, uh, you recently retired, correct? Yes. I actually retired last year in June. Ah, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> why, you. Why, did it, why did you choose Columbus and why did you decide to open Bodega? Now that's funny. Um, we kind of, we saw the opportunity when we came here to Columbus. I came here as an instructor to Fort Benning, to Winsec. Actually, Winsec has a lot of uh, Latino influence um, in its ranks. And uh, I didn't know I was going to be medically retired. Um, we used to own business and restaurants before me and my wife, and we saw the opportunity. We saw the, in a way how can we complement what Columbus already has. If you go to a pizza place, you're not Italian. You just enjoy pizza. So we created Bodega as an answer to having the, the melting of the Latino and the Hispanic community there and to bring something a little bit of ourselves to Columbus. And it has worked pretty decent so far. So what does the word bodega mean in English? So bodega in English, if it's literal, it depends on the country you see it from. So in Spain, a bodega is a wine cellar. In Colombia, a bodega is a little bit like a warehouse in, the, in, the, in your house. In Puerto Rico, well, not in Puerto Rico, but in the States, a small bodega was a small market in a big building of a city, which they served, they had uh, items for sale, and usually they sell one dish a day, which ironically, it was kind of like a meal prep right now, but with the Hispanic touch to it. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, Danny. No, I, 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 I can't. I can't oh wait anymore. God, I'm sorry. I'm gonna take it. <laughs> my <laughs> wife is going to be so jealous. Who is smoking hot, by the way? Um, <laughs> she's going to be so jealous. Cesar. Oh, while I'm enjoying this, tell us about uh, the event center right next door there on Broadway. So to complement Bodega, mm. since Bodega has a uh, small footprint, we merge mm. with a space which before was pop-up town now we call it one two three events of broadway which you can have a little bit of a, an experience of bodega but in your own event so we cater there we have a space that we can serve uh, 200 people inside and we can cater for those customers or they can bring their own food or cater from some uh, somewhere else that sounds great. I totally tuned you out. I have no idea what you said. <laughs> He's too busy eating. <laughs> but so, so let me ask you. You said that rice was a vegan rice? It is a vegan. It was before the salmon was there. Yes. Um, uh, but we created it for the, our vegan community. Well, it, it's really fantastic. I've never tried vegan food before. And... I mean, that's so tasty. I mean, it's so delicious. It's just really great. And the look of it is beautiful. Um, Thank you. It's amazing. Uh, it's, that's enough, Danny. <laughs> Danny's hungry. We're going to finish the show with Danny eating. We want to so. thank you. Thanks, Cesar, for coming here. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate you. you. Um, folks, while I finish this, we're going to be at a commercial. So we will be right back to close. and. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, thank you for your service and thank, thank you, for, you for being a part of our wonderful town yeah. here in Columbus. Awesome. And to uh, everyone out there, don't be afraid to try something different. This vegan rice is delicious and I never thought I would eat vegan rice. <laughs> Till later. Hello, I'm Rob Landers and I'm the director of the Columbus Civic Center. I'm standing in the parking lot of the Columbus Civic Center and it may be empty right now, but come this Juneteenth, this location will be filled with food, fun and festivities. We will host the first citywide Juneteenth celebration on June 14th through June 20th. If you're interested in being a vendor or volunteer, please visit us at columbusga.gov 
forward slash Juneteenth for more information. And now I feel a lot better about myself because I knew that was going to be delicious. I bet you do. You ate so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. You took more taste well. than I did. But just wanted to say, <laughs> this is what we're talking about. The beauty, the beauty that Columbus has that a lot of people don't know about. And that's what we're going to be about. We're going to showcase Columbus, the beauty of it in all aspects of it. And now, before we close out, we do want to teach some Spanish. We're going to use the word of the day in Spanish because um, we wanted to do this show at first as a Latino show, and then we decided, no, we're going to do Around the City. Around Why? The city. Because there's so many interesting things going on in our city, and we need to inform our community, let you be a part of the celebration of the progressiveness uh, that Columbus is doing. Yes, we have crime. Yes, we have problems. But at the same time, Columbus is beautiful. It has a lot of things to offer. So I don't know about you, Danny, but I'm ready to show off the world that Columbus is a great place to live. Absolutely. And in saying that, our Spanish word of the day is going to be tía. Tía Mimi. There you go. And I chose tía because Danny, my nephew here, likes to call me tía. Actually, he's my friend, my best friend. But he likes to call me tía Mimi. So if you're out, you see us out in the community and he says tía Mimi, you know that means Aunt Mimi. And now, <laughs> are you going to say it or you want me to say the difference? You. Okay. Now, if I was calling Danny, I would say Tio Danny, which means uncle. And in the Latino culture, that's the respect that we use um, to our family, our siblings, um, to acknowledge them. For example, if we walked in the door, we would say, Hola, Tio Danny. Or he would say, Hola, Tia, tia Mimi. There you go. You have and never called me Tio, not even I one know. time. I know. That's weird. <laughs> Why would he even say that? Because I just wanted to give them an example of what Tia and Tio is. Those are the two words. Those are the two words. Those Thank you. Those are the two words for the month. Tia and Tio. So yep. now everyone go out there and see your aunt and uncle and practice. Tia is aunt. Tio is uncle. How's that? That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. We're going to teach Spanish here. That's pretty good. As we go. And who you guys heard earlier was uh, Mike King on his cell phone. And we just appreciate what he's doing um, here doing doing the production of our of our new show. Can't do it without Mike, right? Hey, Mike's the man. Mike's the man. Mike's, Mike's the man. man. All right, and um, before we close, we want to make sure that we speak about something super important, okay? And that is um, the word elections. Mimi. Just a <laughs> reminder to everyone, as you can see, this is going to be a very casual um, program. Um, just want to remind everybody, Election Day early voting is May the 2nd through May the 20th. Election Day is May the 24th. Please let your voice be heard. Um, it is important because the development of our city is the future of your children, your grandchildren, and your family. So please get out to vote and let, it be, let your voice be heard. And in closing, I just want to say to um, CCG and Mike King and this government for allowing us to be able to do around the city with Danny and Mimi so that we can show you all the great things. It's not going to be a perfect show, so if you're waiting for it to be perfect, it's not going to happen because we're going to be ourselves. We're going to correct ourselves, we're going to laugh, we're going to cry in certain segments that we do. And just like we did now, we're going to eat and enjoy the food of Columbus. In saying that, as far as, um, I w oh yes, I wanted to do this in Spanish. Can I do that? I was going to wait for you to stop talking. Oh, okay. But yeah. 
<laughs> Why, you want to do it? <laughs> no, okay. no, I wanted to make uh, sure, uh, yes, the ele I wanted to go all the way back to Spanish. that in Spanish, yes. okay? Go um, ahead, Danny. Well, no, um, so, quería decir la importancia de votar. El poder es tuyo, okay? Tienes que ir a votar, por favor. Eh, la fecha, mayo 24, sería el día, el último día. El, el último, último día, día, el último día. And what I just said is that, you know, again, I just reiterate the importance of, of May 24th in our elections and, and having your voice heard, um, particularly in our local elections here in the primaries. Um, let, me let me interject something go ahead, in there go in Spanish. Go ahead, go ahead. Mi gente de Columbus, Georgia, ustedes siempre dicen que su voz no es escuchada. Vaya a votar. Empieza mayo segundo hasta mayo 20. El último día de votar de su voz es mayo 24. So, por favor, vaya y haga su voz oír. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Well, folks, thank you one last time. Thank you one last time um, for tuning in. And we will be back shortly right yes and we'll be back with another show um, soon and please keep um, keep an ear out for when that show will be airing we are super excited to be here we're super excited to be able to come back thank you Columbus uh, we love you very much right Mimi you love them right I love Columbus all right very good I think they love you too I hope so. <laughs> For 28 years, they put up with me. I hope so. <laughs> All right. This well, is uh, Tia Mimi and Danny Erencivia tuning out. Thank you again. Gracias. Hasta luego.